This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue to cover the truce in Gaza and prisoner hostage releases, we're joined by two of the founders of the group Combatants for Peace. Avner Vishnitzer is a member of one of the Israeli military's elite commando units. He's joining us from Jerusalem. And in Ramallah, we're joined by Suleiman Khatib who spent more than 10 years in prison after an altercation with two Israeli soldiers. They recently co-wrote an article for the New York Review of Books headlined, Combatants for Peace. Um, Suleiman, let's begin with you. As you see Palestinians released from prison in exchange for the um, Israeli hostages uh, and those of other nationalities who've been released, can you talk about your thoughts as a former man imprisoned yourself? Uh, firstly, thank you, Amy, for uh, having us, myself uh, and uh, my uh, partner and uh, brother Avner in Jerusalem. Um, and as I heard your interview with the uh, colleagues, speakers before us that explain in details about the prisoners and the hostages uh, exchange. Um, as ex prisoner, I definitely feel uh, a lot of empathy uh, to the prisoners, especially we are talking about kids, actually, uh, women and kids. Uh, that makes me feel uh, optimistic and uh, um, that shows also, unfortunately, where the dehumanization and uh, the multi standards, uh, double standards that exist in this place. And definitely as a ex prisoner personally and combatants for peace in our organization that include Palestinian and Israelis, that we live with a more multiple uh, complex narrative, we would like really both uh, the Israeli uh, government and the Hamas in Gaza to release the prisoners, the civilians that were taken hostages in Gaza and the Palestinian prisoners that we are talking about thousands of them and some of them without charge even in jail. All these prisoners and hostages have families, have rights, and as we see, unfortunately, their rights of, uh, by international law were not granted. As we, myself experienced that. I've been in jail when I was actually 14. Uh, under a military court. Uh, so I know the meaning of separating from your family and being uh, uh, without rights, basically. I know the meaning of that. And what inspired you now to commit your life to peace as a co-founder of Combatants for Peace? So, uh, as an ex-political prisoner, and I participated, I'm a very active person since my childhood, uh, very committed to the liberation and freedom of our people. I participated in uh, different hunger strikes, food hunger strikes in jail, and that was my first introduction uh, and transformation to nonviolence and the power of nonviolence. Um, through my experience and learning about the history of the conflict and learning, uh, I also uh, know Hebrew very well, and I'm coming from indigenous Palestinian family that has living, been living around here, around, outside of Jerusalem, almost more than 500 years. Um, I, I has been uh, opening my heart and my soul and my mind to uh, find partners in the Israeli side that reach the same conclusion, which is basically as simple as no military solution for this conflict. And it's beyond that, because for us, uh, nonviolence is ideology. We advocate for nonviolence, and we advocate for liberation that's collectively connected both uh, Palestinians, despite, of course, the power dynamic and the occupation, which we uh, challenge and we uh, talk about it uh, uh, clearly. I believe that uh, as I said, our freedom and our needs for, for freedom and for uh, dignity and for human rights, both Palestinians and Israeli, is legitimate. The strategies that has been taking place, not just lately, since October 7, but uh, of course, like over decades of occupation and the apartheid system and the violence and the ideology of violence, whether it's coming from a settler violence or it's coming from 
religious violence from uh, Hamas side. We are opposing this clearly and publicly. We are offering a different direction that based on uh, partnership and common interest and common values, based actually on all the story that we Jewish and Palestinian and Arab, we could live uh, in coexistence next to each other and our identities can really be safe and practice in, in the land where we belong. And it doesn't have to be either or. We've been, myself, Avner and other uh, friends, we've been in the place where is it about us or them, uh, eliminate them and the army uh, force uh, options. We don't believe in this anymore. And definitely after I was released from jail, I committed my life to bridge the gap among our people with other activists. And uh, we, the road is uh, long. I know this is a long journey. It's well, not necessarily even for our generation. Let me bring Avner Vishnitzer into the conversation. You are a former member of one of the IDF's elite commando units. What inspired you to help found Combatants for Peace? Hi, and, and thanks for having us. Um, for me, it was the gap between the way I was raised to believe that uh, Israel is a safe haven for the Jews and that it's a, a essentially a liberal democracy and the reality uh, of the occupation, which I uh, learned to um, really know up close only after my service. I was at that time in my uh, early 20s and uh, uh, still a reserve soldier in that same unit. Um, and what I saw in the early 2000s uh, around south, the South Hebron Hills and uh, around Nablus and different places around the West Bank um, really brought me face to face with um, the systematic uh, oppression, uh, of which I was only vaguely aware. And um, it, it exposed, uh, uh, it created a, a dissonance. Uh, the declared uh, values uh, of Israel um, as a democracy and its backyard in which none of these values are valid. And I felt that I can no longer uh, talk the talk and uh, act as if this backyard did not exist. And I uh, refused to serve in the occupied territories in late 2004. And then thinking that it's not enough to just refuse and absolve yourself from, uh, from this uh, systematic violence, it is crucial also to struggle against it actively because you can only refuse once. And at that point, it was early 2005, we were approached by a group of Palestinians who were curious about this refusenik phenomenon. And, and then we started meeting, and these meetings later led to, uh, to the form, formation of Combatants for Peace. And we have been saying for almost two decades what we are still saying now, uh, and we insist even more. As Suri said, there is no military solution. It's a fantasy, but a very dangerous fantasy. Um, and we see now the horror and the fear um, and the hatred in Israel, in the West Bank, in Gaza. Uh, what happened on the 7th of October, the atrocities uh, are unprecedented. And then Israeli, Israeli attack on Gaza and set their violence in the West Bank, again, unprecedented. The levels of violence keep rising and the circle of violence just goes on because we are unable to and do the, 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 the driving forces uh, of, this, of this conflict. First and foremost, the occupation. It's not the only reason, but we believe it's the, it's the most important reason for perpetuating this uh, conflict. And this is why we've been uh, struggling against it for so long. Um, and what we do believe you think there, is, there I... is an alternative, and this is what we're trying to, you know, to, to push forward. 
That's what I want to ask you about. What is the alternative at this point? You have this truce that could end today, uh, unless Hamas releases 10 prisoners a day. But Israel has said only up to 10 days, and that they are going to wipe out Hamas in uh, Gaza. What is the alternative, Avner? So the, the, the alternative is not in this micro tactic level. Uh, I mean, sure, we are for the release of, of all hostages. We are for the release of prisoners. You've talked about the prisoners a lot during this, this, this program. We are talking about something far more fundamental, uh, a sea change, uh, which means uh, the, 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 the renewal of, of, of talks that would lead to a political, a just political solution that is agreed on both sides and not imposed unilaterally. And to support that uh, political process that is so uh, uh, crucial, because right now there is no alternative. It's just brute force. And when people are uh, We have 10 seconds the, left, but then we're going to continue okay, the conversation. When, when, when people are fed with the idea that there is no choice but violence, they respond with violence to each other. We need to open an alternative, a political uh, 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 me, uh, political process to end the violence. Uh, we want to thank you both so much for being with us. We're going to do part two and post it online. Avner Vishnitzer, former Israeli commando, and um, Suleiman Khatib with Combatants for Peace. Thanks for joining us. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.